Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Scavelli, and this is End Time Revival Ministries. My very special guest is Pastor Nick Plummer from Beit Tahila Church in Brandon, Florida. Pastor Nick, thank you for being on the show. Pastor, the Lord has shown you a timetable for 2015 with some very special uh, spiritual significance. Now, as far as I know scripture, the Lord is a God of principle, covenant, law, feast, grace, and numbers. But it is very interesting that Satan also uses days and numbers to mock the Lord. Now, everything that the Lord does is in his timing for our benefit yeah. as a people, as a church, so we may have a closer relationship with him. Now, God's timeline starts in the month of Nisan, in, in the uh, month of April. Now, uh, this is the first of the three national feasts. Can you elaborate on that, please? Uh, more than happy to. Um, actually, I'm a, a, a pastor of a congregation that teaches the Hebrews of the Christian faith, and mm -hmm. uh, I've had the opportunity to, uh, to walk in this and to live this out for going on 20 years. So uh, one of the critical things that I've discovered uh, 20 years ago was the fact that in Leviticus chapter 23, uh, we actually uh, have the Lord's feast days. There's a total of eight feast days, but contained within those eight feast days are the three national feast days, which I believe uh, really expound and share the redemptive plan of God. And we're gonna make it relevant as we share this 2015 biblical timeline. We're going to start off with April the 4th of 2015. Uh, this is, of course, in, in uh, correlation with Nisan 15 in the Hebrew calendar. It's called the Feast of Passover, or Pesach. <clears throat> and this is the first of the three national feasts. Now, you can find the uh, three national feasts in Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 through 17. You can also find them in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 through 17. So once again, in Leviticus 23, there are eight feast days counting the Sabbath, but there are three national feast days that I believe are very critical to understanding how close we are to the return of Messiah. So number one, the Feast of Passover, it's the season of redemption. Now we know that the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt 3,500 years ago, and uh, they, of course, uh, eventually went to the Promised Land. But the, the key to remember is this, is that the children of Israel were definitely redeemed. They put the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts, and they were, of course, uh, redeemed out of Egypt. Now, that's interesting, because if we were to go to modern day times of today, what would that look like today? Today, that would look like somebody accepting Jesus Christ, uh, the Messiah, Yeshua, and becoming born again. Now, born again means to be born from above. So, uh, as we look at this, we can also, in hindsight, look at the season of redemption as the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and then we can also look at it today as people, of course, becoming born again. Uh, I became born again uh, as, a, as a son in God uh, back in March of 1992, so uh, this is a very special time for me, Passover. So, once again, one-third of God's redemptive plan has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled today. Now, connected to the Feast of Passover is something called the counting of the Omer. This is a total of 50 days. And in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 and 16, we are commanded to, of course, count the Omer and to count up to 50. So, Passover is connected to Shavuot, or Pentecost, because of the counting of the Omer. And once again, this is a commandment. And so as you count 250, you are actually uh, learning a teaching and instruction about the Omer. So once again, you're gonna count seven Sabbaths plus one day, and you're going to come to the time of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, which is called Pentecost. And the uh, Jewish sages even say that during the counting of the Omer, it is a time of creativity. Now, what I found interesting during the counting of the Omer was this. Two great events happened uh, actually in this century, which is really profound. During the counting of the Omer, uh, in 1948, in, in May, Israel was founded as a nation mm -hmm. during the counting of the Omer. Mm -hmm. The next greatest thing that happened during the counting of the Omer was, of course, uh, they took back Jerusalem uh, back in 1967 in the Six-Day War. So both those events during uh, the counting of the Omer took place, so that's pretty profound. And so as we move towards this, we know that this last year, on May 24th, 2015, which is Sivan 6, uh, is actually we celebrated the Feast of Shavuot, or Pentecost. 
Now, we talked about the first national feast day of being, of course, uh, Passover. Uh, children of Israel being brought out of Egypt, being born again even today, and we're just praying for more people to be born again. Uh, now we're moving into the second national feast day, and uh, this is very interesting because in Exodus 19, it talks about the giving of the Torah at the time of Shavuot or Pentecost. It actually says in Exodus 19, in the third month. So if you just do the math, you can figure it out that at the time of Shavuot, uh, the Torah was given, <clears throat> God actually entered into a marriage covenant with the children of Israel. Now that's quite exciting because, why is that exciting? Because we know in Acts chapter two, the promise of the Holy Spirit was fulfilled. Uh, that Jesus Jesus promised us. He promised us the Holy Spirit would, would come and be brought to us. And so we're just excited that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit w was a promise that He would do three things. He would convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And so we know that the Holy Spirit is working on overtime today to correct a lot of these things that we're seeing around us in our culture. So just to make a, a long story short, you know, think about it. You know, if, if the three national feast days are Passover, Shavuot and Tabernacles, we're already at Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So God's Spirit is being poured out, and we know that, and we, we can reflect in hindsight and know that the Torah was given and the Holy Spirit was given. So let's think about that. So now we're going to be moving towards some other things that are contained within the biblical timeline. This is very interesting because you're going to learn a lot from the past. You learn a lot from the people in the Bible. Moses goes up the mountain for 40 days to receive the Torah. He's going to go up to receive the commandments of God. In Exodus chapter 24, uh, verse 12, all the way through chapter 32 and verse 15. So this is Moses' first ascent, okay? So they agree to the, to the marriage covenant. He says, okay, I'm going to go up the mountain and I'm going to bring down the Torah, the ketubah or the marriage covenant, <clears throat> for all of us to follow. So while he's up on the mountain for 40 days, we have some very interesting things that happened. It's, it's actually very interesting uh, because... As he's coming down the mountain, Tammuz 17, this date, July 4th, 2015, is considered the golden calf incident in Exodus 32. So that's, that's what's very interesting. So as he's coming down the mountain, he breaks the commandments, he throws them on the ground, the stone tablets, and he's mad at the people because they've contaminated themselves, they've committed harlotry, they've contaminated the place, and, and, and that's the act that took place. Now what I find very interesting, looking at the, the 2015 biblical timeline is this. If we were to go back in time, Moses is up on the mountain receiving those commandments. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to look at that today, we can see something very historical that took place. Same-sex marriage act was passed by the Supreme Court on June 26. Now, Moses would have been up on the mountain when this would have been passed. Wow. So it's kind of in correlation with the golden calf because this actually took place. And timing is everything. And the season of summer is a very, very special time in between the spring feast and the fall feast. So as we look at this, we even see some more interesting things happening. July 4th of 2015 is, the, is, the, is, the, is of course the memorial of the golden calf incident, Exodus 32. It's called Tammuz 17 in the Hebrew calendar. <clears throat> now, notice that it's July 4th. So what our government did is they lifted sanctions off of Iran on July 14th. So after the Golden Calf incident, they lifted sanctions off of Iran. And only time will tell if this was a good deal or a bad deal. So then what happens is this. You're going to have three weeks of affliction. And this is from Tammuz 17, which is the Golden Calf incident, to Av 9. Now we're looking at something very historical. We went from Pentecost, we went from, from that to, to Shavuot, to of course going into the golden calf incident, which was not a good thing. Uh, Paul even talks about it, 1 Corinthians 10, it was not a good uh, event. Now all of a sudden, we're going to Av 9. Now, from the golden calf incident to the destruction of both temples. Mm. Now it seems like it's getting more severe. Now you got the golden calf incident, <clears throat> and it's called the three weeks of affliction. From Tammu 17 in the Hebrew calendar to Av 9, this is what you're going to have. So on July 25th of 2015 was Av 9. They call it Tish B'Av among the Jewish people. This was the destruction of both temples. So let's think about this now. We've talked about Passover being the first national feast day. It has been fulfilled. It is being fulfilled. We know that at Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, okay, that the Torah was given 
and the Holy Spirit was given. Now, is the Holy Spirit still being poured out? Absolutely. So what I want to submit to you is that two thirds of God's redemptive plan mm. has been fulfilled, is being fulfilled. This is where it gets very interesting, especially the times in which we live. And I love what Moses did. Moses goes up the mountain a second time for 40 days to make intercession for the golden calf incident. So as we hear about all these things in our government and around us, we need to be praying and interceding instead of slandering or, or gossiping or anything or not getting the truth right. But we need to be careful about that. So this was the second time, and you can find this in Exodus chapter 32, verses 30 through 34. So now we're going to look at something very interesting. So Moses is going up on the mountain to plead with God to spare the people. Because God said, I'm going to eradicate the people. I'm going to eradicate them and make a people out of you. Moses interceded. And that's what I love about Moses. It's a time for intercession. So we're going to go from Tammuz 17 to Elul 1. And that's very interesting. Because that is going to fall on August the 16th of 2015 is Elul 1. Now Elul 1 is actually the sixth month of the Hebrew calendar. It is the sixth month of the Hebrew calendar. And contained within Elul 1 is the season of Teshuvah. It begins. Well, what is Teshuvah? What is Teshuvah? What, what are the Jewish people doing that we as Christians could learn from? They are repenting and they are returning. Hmm. And that's what's happening. And so what we've done as a congregation is on Elul 1, the Daniel fast begins. We started a Daniel fast, and right now we are actually uh, on day 13. And so we decided to do this. And, and, and as you look at the season of Teshuvah, it's very important. In, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, it, it talks about seasons and times. And so we know that we've got to get in the right mode, and we have to be in the right season in order to be ready for His return. And that's the interesting thing about what I'm sharing with you about this timeline is that, you know, it's about seasons. It's not about setting a date. And so Moses goes up the mountain a third time to receive the second set of tablets. This is what's really, really cool. In Exodus chapter 34, verses 1 through 29. So from Elul 1 to Tishri 10 is, of course, the last time that Moses was up the mountain to come down off this mountain. And we know that Tishri 10 is the Day of Atonement. So once again, a quick review. Passover, the Feast of Passover, has been fulfilled, is being fulfilled. The Feast of Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks, which we call Pentecost, has been fulfilled, is being fulfilled. And now we're moving towards the last and final feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. What's interesting about the three sets of 40 with Moses is that the first time he went up on the mountain, he was to receive the commandments and the tablets, and he did. And when he did that, he brought them down, but he broke them. He immediately went back up for another set of 40 days to make intercession. It even says he fasted and, and, and didn't eat anything or drink anything. I find that very interesting. Then, of course, the last and final test is going to, of course, take us to September the 13th of 2015. Now, this is very interesting because this is called Tishri 1. It's the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar. And now we're moving into some really exciting things. Uh, you've heard of Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. So it's going to be in the Hebrew calendar, 5776. So 5,776 years ago, the, the, you know, God created the world. He created Adam and Eve. And that's what the Jewish people believe. That's what they teach through the Hebrew calendar. Now, we know that there's discrepancies in the calendar, but we can know the seasons and the times that we're living in. Now, Tishri 1 is going to be coming up, and we know that, this is called a Shemitah year. Mm. This is a Shemitah year, and it means the year of release. Mm. So from now until even September the 13th in the evening, which is Tishri 1, we're going to have a, a year of release. It is the Shemitah year. And this is where we find in the scriptures that they are to do this every, every six years. And so on the seventh year, it's a Shemitah year. And so that's what we're looking at. People are looking at events, and Jonathan Kahn is is mentioning a lot of these things, and he has a lot of insight in that. And so this, this is what we're really looking at. So if you continue on in this biblical timeline, you're going to come to, of course, Yom Teruah, which is the blowing of, of the shofars. Mm -hmm. You're going to go into the 10 days of awe. It, it mean, it's actually from the Feast of Trumpets to the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. So once again, you can follow along with this and just write, mark it down. So September 13th in the evening until September 23rd in the evening, 
it, in the Hebrew calendar is Tishri 1 to Tishri 10. And so that's what we're going to see. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have these 10 days of all. And what the Jewish sages have taught is something very profound. And we as Christians can learn a lot from the Jewish people. It's this. There's three classes of people during those 10 days of all. There are the righteous, the wicked, and the intermediates. The righteous will be sealed and, and they'll, be, they'll be saved and, and be brought into the kingdom. Uh, the wicked will continue to be wicked and, 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 and they, of course, will, will suffer that judgment. But then there's a, a class of people called the intermediates. Mm -hmm. It's those people that haven't quite made up their mind for Yeshua, for Jesus. And uh, I can only encourage you uh, as much as I can to, to, for today is the day of salvation. And so you don't want to be an intermediate. You want to be counted among the righteous. And so that's very, very important. What I find interesting as this begins to unfold is that I just found out that actually Pope Francis will be flying in on the Day of Atonement. And the very next day, okay, on September 24th, uh, Pope Francis will address the House of Representatives. Now that's very interesting. He's flying in on the Day of Atonement. You know, how many of you know that Yeshua Jesus is our high priest? And here comes the Pope, who's supposed to be a representative of a high priest or whatever, coming in on the Day of Atonement. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Mm. So as we look at this, we're going to follow the, the final, uh, actually, redemptive plan of God is on September 27th of uh, 2015 in the evening. It's Tishri 15 in the Hebrew calendar. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the Feast of Tabernacles mm. or the Feast of Sukkot. Now, we know last year we had Blood Red Moon on Passover in the beginning of Tabernacles. And in this year, we're also going to have a blood red moon at Tabernacles. Now, we had one at Passover as well. Two years in a row, they call it a tetrad, which is, of course, four blood red moons in two years. And it's interesting, the blood red moon, it, it actually as a sign or an omen, is a warning to Israel. It's a warning to Israel, not only for all those that are grafted in, but even for the state of Israel, the country of Israel. This is a warning to Israel. And so we can see this happening even today. And that's what's very, very exciting. Now, what's really interesting is that, you know, once again, we're moving towards the Feast of Ingathering. So are you gathering or are you scattering? And then, of course, it goes on to October the 4th in the evening of 2015. Uh, Tishri 22 is, of course, uh, Shemini at Suret. It's the eighth great day. So you have seven days of tabernacles and then the eighth great day and the number eight of course means new beginnings mm. so eight is a very powerful number there of course uh, eight is new beginnings there were uh, you know uh, eight people on the ark there were of course uh, if you look at this you'll see that on the eighth great day it, it, it's a very powerful day uh, among the Jewish people it's a high holy day but we know we have eight feast days and uh, that's what's really really interesting so as we move forward here, we also have on October the 5th in the evening, 2015, on Tishri 23, Simchat Torah is the joy of the Torah. The, the Jewish people celebrate uh, an extra day that's not found in Leviticus, but they call it Simchat Torah, about the giving of the Torah. And what's interesting about that is that the scriptures are very uh, exciting because the Jewish people have synagogues. And in the synagogue, they read the Torah portions mm -hmm. from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing about this whole uh, fall feast is that the whole Torah cycle is going to complete. Mm -hmm. And you go right back into the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at a Torah cycle coming to a close. They're celebrating Simchat Torah. And of course, it's going to start over. Mm -hmm. So in every synagogue that you go, right now they're in the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. And so the book of Deuteronomy is a fascinating book. It's a, it's a book of remembrance. Uh, it's Moses' last words before the Lord would take him. And uh, the last words of a dying man or one that's going to be departed is really important to know. So as we look at this, it's very interesting because I was actually raised Catholic. I was a backslidden Catholic when I gave my life to the Lord. And have you ever noticed that when you go to Mass or you go to the Catholic Church that, you know, the, the homily and the readings and the scriptures are all the same, whether you're in South America or you're in Italy or in North America. And where do they get this? Where did they get this? They got it from the Jewish people. Because you can go in any synagogue around the world and be on the same Torah portion. And so that's what we're seeing actually in, in the book of Deuteronomy. So let's do a little review here. The testing of Israel began on May 24th of 2015, which is what? The Feast of Shavuot or Pentecost. 
and it will conclude on September the 23rd in the evening of 2015 on the Day of Atonement. Once again, I'm not setting dates for his return. I'm not setting dates for anything cataclysmic to happen. I'm, I'm telling you the seasons. I'm telling you what we're in. And for those of you that are watching or listening or want to share this message with others, we are going to be tested. We are going to have tests and trials, and it's okay. So once again, as you look at this, it's very interesting. And even in Hebrews 10, I'm going to go there because a lot of people take this out of context, but we don't want to take it out of context. So I would like to go to the book of Hebrews. All right. And I'm going to go to the 10th chapter, and I'm going to read. I'm going to read verses 19 through 25 in, in Hebrews 10. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This is a sign of a mikvah. This is a ceremonial cleansing. It's not a water baptism, but it's, it's to be immersed, a, a mikvah. And the Jewish people would actually do mikvahs before the Shabbat, uh, before that evening. They would do mikvahs. And so what this is saying is that this is a good time to do a mikvah, washed with pure water. He goes on to say, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now we say that when the doors are open in the church, we should be there, absolutely. But in context, he's referencing the day of atonement. It's about corporate forgiveness. That's what it's about. So once again, the testing of Israel began on May 24th of 2015, which is Shavuot or Pentecost, and it will conclude on September the 23rd in the evening on 2015 on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So here we go. There are three sets of 40 days from the Feast of Pentecost to the Day of Atonement. Once again, there are three sets of 40 days from the Feast of Pentecost to the Day of Atonement. On Shavuot, it was May 24th, of course, to the Golden Calf of July 4th of this year. The second set of 40 days was the golden calf incident on July 4th to Elul 1 in the Hebrew calendar, August the 16th. Mm -hmm. So brother, we are approaching the last of the 40 day testing. From Elul 1, which is August the 16th, to Tishri 10, which is September 23rd. So once again, there are three sets of 40 days from the Feast of Pentecost to the Day of Atonement. And it's interesting because I hear all the negativity, there's campaigns going on, there's candidates, uh, I think, speaking out of turn and things. Uh, we are to pray for our leaders. But the biggest thing that stood out to me through the biblical timeline was this. Like Moses, we should be making intercession and not accusations. We should be praying for those that have fallen, and we should show mercy to those who are around us. And that's what we're seeing today. That's exactly what we're seeing. So all I want to say is this, is that we are 2,000 years closer to the feast of ingathering of our Lord Jesus Christ than we ever have been. It is the third and final national feast day that has to happen. So what's keeping you away from your brothers and your sisters? What's keeping you away from people? Mm. Is it offenses? Is it hurts? Mm -hmm. What is it? Mm -hmm. Because we need each other. Sure. You know, I need you yeah. and you need me. Sure. And that's what's important because like Moses, we should be making intercession and not accusations. So when people want to talk about Donald Trump or they want to talk about Obama, why don't we just pray for them yeah. and lift them up sure. and be positive yeah. because even Peter lifted up Emperor Nero. Yeah. So that's quite astounding to me. That's a great example. Yeah. So I'm excited because I'm a gatherer, not a scatterer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the community and the church thrive in these days mm -hmm. and come together and say, hey, I want to be with you and you mm -hmm. want to be with me. Mm -hmm. and and. Jesus even said, they'll know you're my disciples because of the love that you have for one another. Mm. And so this is very critical. Like I said, I've been studying this for 20 years. I'm married. i got six children, another one on the way. And I take this very, very, very mm. serious. This is life changing. And you know what? This doesn't mean anything if your heart doesn't line up with what the Word says. Mm. And that's my prayer for me is I want my heart 
to know what I just shared with you. I want my heart to line up with this. Pastor, um, since we're in a Shemitah year, um, I'm not trying to set dates or anything of that nature. Do you think because of the same sex marriage act that was passed, there's a possibility that there could be some type of judgment pronounced on the United States? You know, it, it's interesting that I believe a line was crossed Yeah. because a marriage is actually defined as between a man and a woman. Sure. And, and we know that they want to call same-sex marriage civil unions or whatever. Yes. But I'm all for promoting, you know, marriages between a man and a woman. Yes. And showing unconditional love to those around me. Yeah. But uh, it's very important that, that we practice that and promote that and teach yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Just like in our congregation, we teach betrothal and not dating. Yeah. Because dating sets you up for divorce. Sure. So betrothal is, is actually where we're at, you know, prophetically, even with the Lord. We're betrothed to Him. But, you know, we could we could forfeit, you know, being the bride by being yeah. rebellious. And sure. so I think that, you know, we need to really be praying and we need to take the right action. Yeah. We need to take the right action for that. Do you, do you feel, um, since these four blood moons have occurred, and uh, it's very rare, uh, it doesn't happen very often, and it, it's about judgment, no, for uh, um, a warning to the Jew and to um, the people who've been grafted in like Christians. Don't you find it pretty interesting that we're heading towards September and uh, all this it's is exciting? All this is materializing. It really is. It is exciting. Yeah. And so, you know, my best advice is to keep looking up because because our redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. So I, I'm excited about the times we're living in. Yeah. This is the best time for the church, sure. I believe. This is the best time to be a light. This is the best time sure. to see, you know, the Book of Acts Part Two. I believe, you know, the, a continuation of what the Holy Spirit truly wants to do, and I believe that He's going to use all of us. Yeah. You may be watching a show right now. There's a tremendous amount of information that's just been pronounced before you. God is a God of numbers. He's a God of uh, uh, seasons. Now listen, the time is short, and I believe Jesus is coming very, very soon. Something is going to happen in September. It's very interesting how all this timeline is, is leading to this critical point in our history. If you're sitting out there and you have not asked Jesus into your heart, just say this prayer. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as Lord and King. Fill me and change me and use me and let me never be the same again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor Nick, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, very good information, a very good study here. Um, Jesus is coming soon. If you want to uh, attend a great church uh, that uh, studies the old Jewish tradition and also become born again, go to Beit Tehila in Brandon. It's an awesome church. I've been there. You'll love it. I'm Dr. Stephen Scavelli for End Time Revival Ministries. May the Lord richly bless you.